So, Roger, where have we just come from? We've come from the Welcome Exhibition uh, exhibit uh, on uh, the history of the uh, Bethlehem Hospital through the ages. And what do you think of it? Um, um, I had an interesting um, experience of it because it was all through uh, audio uh, description of uh, a portion of the exhibition. An extremely good audio description. Um, and what, what immediately came out of it was what it was, it was chronology. Chronology of the development of the experiences of the Bethlehem Hospital through the ages, through the eyes of the people who put the exhibition together. It would be easy to knock it and say what it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't a lot of things. Uh, it was what it was, and for that I found it very interesting. It, uh, it, it, it made me think about um, changing ideas um, uh, to the prism of, of one particular institution um, uh, from, from a, a, a range of perspectives Ma mainly, mainly through the um, visual experiences of people who are involved with the hospital and uh, so, so, some, some other ex examples of what was happening at that time around other parts of Europe um, and so it opened up a lot of things that are saying I don't know enough and I want to go out and find a bit more. What it didn't do was put it against the mirror of what was happening in society around it at each of the periods that it went through. Um, uh, several hundred years of history and uh, at each of those periods I could pick things out, you know, major periods, the, the, the Great Enlightenment period, uh, industrialization. Uh, pre industrial it goes back to the 13th, 13th century. So, you, you know, you can see it through a progression in historical time, and of course, it didn't relate it to the changing circumstances of society around it. Uh, and that you had to put into place, I think. So, I'm pleased I came, I'm pleased I saw it. It's made me think, uh, it made me want to go and find out more about oh, an area. What? Yeah, which are the things you want to go and find out more about that it made you really think about? Um, about uh, models of, 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 of uh, thought around what mental health is as a definition and how that has either been created as a result of the chain. The, cl the, the, the clearest example was it really all started at the time when society really changed around it and we all became uh, came into towns, into cities, uh, into very structured environments, living environments, and before that there was there was really nothing there. It was more more metaphysical than physical in a way, related to um, um, possession and religious constructs. Uh, but but no separation, no separation. Only when only when and this is knowing that you know the, the, the dates mean that things were happening outside of all of this uh, that was in the exhibition today. That it, that, it, that, it, that it's seen as for people who don't conform, don't fit in, have to be seen as separated, as different, and as uh, uh, needing to be needing to be mended. Uh, although there were some exceptions to that, uh, but still, with even within that, that they needed to be treated or needed to be supported outside of mainstream society, right through to the very last exhibit, <coughs> which was um, about accommodating all different uh, experiences of, 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 of how people experience the world uh, in all its diverse ways and in, in, in ways that medically people would say were delusional or um, abnormal um, but it could only do so in a construct which is outside of, 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 of normal society creation of a, of a, of a hotel of madness uh, in which everyone could have their, their, their own free comfortable living space but not in the real world, not in the outside world, not in part of, of, of everything uh, where everyone's included. The only part of that was the example of the um, uh, society in Belgium, um, where people had lived, they were part of the community, they were boarders uh, with a, with a B-O-A-R-D-E-R-S, uh, and, and that was a rural community, and that was very interesting. That was very interesting, it persisted throughout the whole of that chronology. So and still is there today. I agree. I thought for, for me the Giel information was really interesting about how that community 
how it includes people with mental health support needs yeah. and they in terms of a construction of of mental illness those people exactly as you say they're viewed as borders and they contribute yeah. to the community and the local economy and that contrasted very sharply with the history of the Bethlehem where people are taken away from society um, but in terms of, of the future direction for mental health services, the key question the exhibition asked was whether we need to reclaim the asylum as a place of refuge from modern society as a way of dealing with the current rise in the prevalence of mental ill health and the chaotic, what the exhibition described as the current chaotic marketplace where there are so many different therapies on offer and yet none fits it was kind of offering the asylum and a return to it as a solution what do you, do you think about that central question i think that's just that, that question is very good because it's crystallized it for me i think which is which is that yes we will need that as long as we live in the society that we're living in it goes back to what we saw today didn't have the mirror of the society around it the the control the autonomy the the the, the, the top down um, controlling power relationships existing within the institutions of pe trying to uh, get people to conform to society or e or exist even at the most the more um, um, uh, um, uh, 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 open and progressive uh, ways of, 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 of allowing them to express themselves but within a confined environment very much mirrors, mirrors the outside world as I was saying, the move away from essentially from earlier societies into towns, into cities, into industrialised society, whereby the structure of the of the society itself, you have to conform in a different way. In the streets around us, we all have to walk in the same pattern. Everyone has to walk on the right hand side or the left hand side. Everyone has to obey the rules of traffic on the roads. Everyone has to conform to norms of behavioural patterns. If you stand outside that, you have to be removed. And as long as we have a society that's geared around that way, then we will continue to need those refuges. What we need to do is look back at society, and the easy is to look back at a more primitive kind of society, the religious society uh, in, 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 in Belgium, which offers an alternative to that. But we can't return to that, because we're not in a rural society, a simple uh, uh, agrarian society anymore. We're in an industrial society, therefore we need to look at changing the way that society outside is structured and radically transform the power structures because what happens outside mirrors how we treat people inside. And if we and, and we want to get away from that, going back to institutions and however enlightened they are, however free they are, however uh, control of the inmates, they remain inmates. If we want to in integrate and have a fully inclusive society, then, uh, then, then, then we need to look at the way we need to radically transform society. The one unanswered question, was I was shown, there was a group of Native American Indians who were shown around one of these institutions, and I would give my hind teeth for a translation of what they really thought about what they saw, and how that translated to their experiences. From and, the and to put that in context, that was the 19th century, was it? 18, was 1830s, I 1830s, think. 1830s, so, yes. so, so very early on, uh, before Buffalo Bill and Wild Hill hmm. Hickok and Sitting Bull coming over, that was later. Uh, 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 you know, t t t t at the end, with the destruction of, 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 the, of, the, of the Native American populations. This is still quite early on. I don't know if they'd have been enlightened towards people with delusional, what we call delusional experiences or not, but they wouldn't be the same as ours. They come from a society which doesn't have separate institutions for people who are blind or physically disabled or who experience the world intellectually or mentally in, 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 a, in a different way. Uh, uh, and, and, and it would have been that... that, that, that to that find would out what very... they thought about their trip to England yeah, and yeah. to the York Retreat would be fascinating. It would be fascinating. But all we've and, got and, is yeah. their uh, uh, drawn signatures in a visitor's book for the York Retreat from the 1830s. In, in, yeah. In, 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 yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. Because uh, it crosses those cultural boundaries. It says it's a, a people from the past, if you like, uh, of what from pre-industrialisation, from pre-modern uh, society, uh, brought into a modern society, and and, and and that would have been very interesting to see how they experience that separation. I mean, and uh, uh, we have to try and do that. That's the answer. We yeah. have to try and do that, and that means we have to think very radically about 
the, the mirror of our society outside determines what we consider as normal or abnormal, conformity or non-conformity, uh, and how we can incorporate that in crowded environments whereby it's nature people have, have to conform, the nature of a busy city that we're in. It can't function if there's complete anarchy. The, 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 the tube lines, you know, the tube trains can't both run on the same track in different directions. Uh, we, we created a society, with, and this goes into, in, into work, it goes into every aspect of our lives. Uh, and, and with the separation, with the, with the hierarchy, uh, there has to be conformity, there can be an allowance for a certain amount of, 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 of disconformity, uh, but, but at the end of the day that comes down to a hierarchical um, uh, um, uh, 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 controlling. Uh, of, of, uh, within uh, of, of what's allowed and what's not, and where things are not. So at the end of the day, no, we don't. They, they, no, that last exhibit, exhibit uh, it, it, it's accepting that, that you know this is the best we can do, and I don't believe that's the best we can do. So I would say, in summary, the exhibition throws so much in there. Whatever you think about the curation of it and the questions it asks, it definitely makes you think about some central questions to. Uh, definitions of mental health and and how we deal with them in our current society. I, I think it makes you think that maybe if you've also been in contact with thoughts which which make us question what's going on around. I think if you were just going in there, you could come away with a very different perception, which was that across time there were some very progressive attempts to to really open up mental health services and open up the doors and allow people to express themselves through art. And and, uh, and 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 through um, opening opening the windows and allowing people into the grounds and nature, uh, and, and and it can seem very progressive, uh, but it still remains isolating people and locking them away and treating them as ill. Yeah. As uh, so, a dose of broken. cynicism is needed to accompany a, a visit to the exhibition. A dose of cynicism <laughs> and also a dose, dose of optimism. Oh, yeah. And the optimism has to come from your, your outside thinking that actually the world we live in, again, that mirror that the world we live in is not the best place. And this is the one that, that actually creates many of these difficulties. That w without, without the controls that, that the controlling society has to impose on us that many of the difficulties people experience or many of the uh, ways people behave because of their own experiences could be accommodated as with the situation in Belgium uh, with all its limitations. It's a little institution in itself if you like. It's almost, isn't it, isn't it? it's another asylum. Uh, a, a time or uh, a, a, a one place where it's okay but out, step outside the village borders and you're back in the outside world and, and you're no longer fit. So it's in, extent, in a way it's only an extension of the same problem. We have to go back to thinking actually the problem is outside, not inside. It's not in the people's heads, it's in how the world's organised, how the world's constructed. Um, creates confusion, creates uh, stress, anxiety, but, but also can't accommodate uh, the kinds of differences that, well, are we surprised how many billions of us are there on the planet? The, the, you know, with, 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 with the um, uh, creativeness of who we are as an intellectual uh, conscious species, that, 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 that our, our, our conscious experience is not hugely diverse in the same way that our physical uh, uh, um, appearance is diverse, as our, uh, everything else about us is diverse. We can't accommodate that because it doesn't fit in the norms, and that, that lies outside, not in the institutions, not in the problems of the individuals who are incarcerated or labelled with the label of, 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 of people with mental health problems. Thank you, Roger Lewis. <laughs>